to form a part of the home guard and do what we could in the home country. Uh, a few days after uh, making this decision, I had two gentlemen call at my place of work and uh, suggesting that I should uh, form a uh, home guard. If uh, I could give them any names uh, as to likely officers who had uh, plenty of time to go into the country around about and uh, advise men what, what to do, how to fill in the forms and such like. In asking who uh, these gentlemen were, I was told by an elderly man that he was General Sir John Burnett Stewart of Creaky House uh, into the bus uh, to uh, make that plea and uh, he readily agreed and set a car uh, at my disposal. So, and starting locally, uh, talking about how uh, we would form into bodies and train uh, all our First Army, uh, we moved around the countryside, Sandhaven, Rosehatty, Aberdawa, uh, Rathen, Lonmay, Cremond, all round about Kenmundi, uh, uh, occupying quite a good deal of time. Now during this time, local bodies were being formed uh, with ex-service men uh, as leaders. Uh, then the ranks came up and the leaders were uh, granted the title of uh, platoon commanders and I had the title, the grand title of uh, Major O.C. 5th uh, Battalion, Buchan Battalion, Gordon Hilder. Uh, it was amazing the willingness in the whole countryside of men to give up their time at night and even some through the day to be instructed and rifle and uh, arms fire of all description. We even uh, went the length of having a bomb disposal squad uh, of uh, airplane spotters, of uh, guns, aircraft guns, uh, buffers guns, harlequin guns, uh, various machine guns including the Marlins from uh, America. Uh, the uh, the uh, bomb disposal squad uh, were handed over to the, for training, to the regular bomb disposal squad in Aberdeen and uh, had the honour of being asked in uh, along with the Aberdeen Post Office uh, bomb disposal squad to help the regular squad to clear Aberdeen after the famous all night bombing raid and the huge quantity of unexploded bombs lying about, including one in the uh, very near the nurse's home at Forrester Hill. Uh, we uh, had uh, motor car platoons, we had cyclist platoons, we had uh, just ordinary walking platoons, we had a beach patrol, we had 24 hour manned spotters posts. Uh, we turned out at every alert. Uh, 
we were instructed, as I said before, on Boffer's guns and the teams capable of taking over from the uh, army. Accordance to the, this takeover, we had a sergeant, a regular sergeant, and a private, a regular private, who unfortunately, uh, through an accident with the modern machine guns, uh, was uh, shot through the heart, fell in to put a safety catch on before he started cleaning the guns. Uh, the beach patrol uh, walked every morning at daybreak from Freshborough to Enverarchy, uh, looking for any side of sign of uh, troop landing or uh, landing from small rubber dinghies and such like. Uh, we attended all sorts of courses. I went to Donington Hall uh, near Northampton and had a course of bomb disposal and was able to take on the bomb disposal squad the local Home Disposal Squad, who were all members of the Home Guard. Uh, there were many uh, exciting nights, a night of uh, Benzie and Miller's fire. Our headquarters then were in the old academy just across the street from the blaze. We had uh, quite an amount of uh, bombs, uh, fire bombs, explosives of all descriptions stored in the building. Uh, and we had to get to transport and shift the whole head uh, assortment of bombs uh, out of town and to safe quarters uh, in case of uh, serious explosions. We had many active moments and mounting guard over bomb buildings until the uh, civil defense had cleared up and dictated what uh, should be done and such like. And then we uh, uh, went back to headquarters and uh, a stick of bombs dropped across uh, what is now a new academy up in the hill. Uh, there was, uh, we managed to raise all the bombs with the exception of one which uh, was on the roadway then. Uh, now, of course, there's no roadway uh, being, uh, up, being filled in uh, for the use of the new hospital. But the German bomb disposal squad that were left uh, actually found the bomb about uh, a yard outside all the diggings that we had made and given up. So they now took command and uh, took the bombs to the beds and uh, blew them up. So that was the end of the, the, what was the hospital known then to us as the hospital bomb. Of course, uh, some of our squad in Aberdeen also was at the bomb at uh, Forrester Hill. Uh, we divided up with the post office and the regulars with a regular in command of each squad. And uh, within a day, we had cleared all the UXPs in Aberdeen. Uh, the Provost of Freshborough then, Provost Walker, met me one day and said he had just been congratulated 
upon the fresh bed of bomb disposal squad and coming to Aberdeen Z, he said, I never knew that we had a bomb disposal squad in fresh bed. So I had to explain to him that it wasn't the fresh bed of bomb disposal, it was really the tool works bomb disposal squad. All the members were tool works employees mm -hmm. and they're all given the fullest assistance and time off and such like by their management to fulfill any duties they were asked to do. And eventually you became the second in command at the Home Guard for B Division. Like when uh, you uh, the, uh, what happened was towards the end, uh, the general was failing in health and uh, he felt it imperative that he should attend some of the military commanders uh, south somewhere. I don't know where, he never told me where these meetings were held, but he went there quite a lot and felt that he was uh, just not able to travel some months backwards and forwards and that he would have to give up. And uh, our little John from Peterhead, who was second in command, would uh, take over and I, as senior captain, would uh, now become the uh, 2IC uh, battalion. Uh, but quite a, a few amusing incidents, incidents with this, including a highlight of a, of a get-together in the GIC when somebody unknown provided uh, enough drink to bathe in if you wanted to. And there was quite a merry evening then towards the end. And, uh, we sent our thanks to whoever it was who provided the, the drink. You also run summer camps at uh, Fish Fair near Old Deer. We had the use of the house uh, for billets and uh, any lectures and the use of the grounds for outside work. We appreciated this very much because it brought all the companies in the district, in the whole of Buchan, so many people each weekend came from these various companies and were good to know each other and we worked very well indeed. Uh, I, in this squad was another uh, squad from Cairness where the CPT headquarters staff had moved from London to Kearney's house and they had a platoon of their own. So we became quite friendly with our own platoons and Fresbury. Altogether we had uh, 14 different platoons. Uh, there were uh, platoons who had uh, cars for mobility and could move about quickly and quite distances. We had uh, bicycle platoons who could go to inaccessible places for cars. We had uh, ordinary foot sluggers and uh, with machine gun platoons, bomb disposal platoon, as that, as that. Uh, uh, until we were quite well organized. Uh, in connection with the finish of the war, I'm sad to tell people that there was no real end. All that was was that the war was over and there was no get-together by commanders uh, to thank the men for the attendances at drills and the enthusiasm that they had shown in uh, each of their own 
uh, platoon departments, whether it was uh, rifles or machine guns or buffer guns or whatever. Uh, the management uh, of the CPT uh, thanked the bomb disposal people for uh, removing the one bomb that actually came inside the works, inside the buildings. Uh, there were one or two fire bombs within the grounds, but not in any of the buildings. So uh, I fortunately discovered this for this bomb about ten feet up. It had struck a metal shield of a machine, and the shield was so pliable that it ricocheted up to a height of ten foot and landed in a wooden bin full of aluminium castings in uh, one of our buildings. Uh, got it out and uh, removed the uh, firing mechanism and the, the detonator and uh, destroyed it and gave the bomb to the works as uh, a memento. The guns were sent here to defend a radio station at White Whale in the Memsey district. They were under camouflage, they were never fired, and as we were being pretty badly bombed every day for some time, sometimes twice in a day. Uh, our people were getting restless and uh, one day a low flying plane dropped two bombs. Uh, fortunately they were outside the, the works and uh, that put the cat amongst the pigeons. The Air Force wanted to know, as they always did after a raid, the very quick word when raids were on. They always wanted what information we could give them, whether it interfered with a very special part of the Merlin engine which we were uh, manufacturing. And uh, this day uh, we had a whole machine shop, glass roof, blown in, and uh, there was a bit of grumbling that they couldn't work there. And I said to uh, the RAF in London uh, that there was a battery of buffer guns only about half a mile from us, or a mile, not more than that, and could they not give us the the guns, instead of lying, doing nothing. So within half an hour, Lord Beaverbrook himself came on and phoned me in the works and said, uh, this battery of buffer guns is yours. You were arranged to meet them. They've been told, and you do what you want with this gun. So we had the battery of guns and succeeding and maintaining and manning and firing the guns till the end of the hostilities. And some of these guns were situated around the box as well. Some of the guns were situated... Oh yes, 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 yes. Some of the guns were... Actually, one gun was on the perron. Mm -hmm. uh, we had other two guns in the works perimeter. And uh, the fourth gun we put onto the north shore because they could come in low without our spotters being able to see over the buildings in the town, which came between us and the gun. 
So he had uh, his own freedom to fire at uh, any enemy identified planes, which he did on several occasions. What can you tell us about the Kissick platoon? What can you tell us about the Kissick platoon? The Kissick platoon, all the Kissick platoon were uh, all machine gun men, Browning machine guns with a machine gun officer who was a machine gun in the first war, uh, who had quite a number of guns. Uh, and uh, of course, mostly the elderly men who were able to just go outside and man their gun and their gun pit. Uh, they had no patrols along the beach or anything, or cycling or anything like that to do. It was quite an old man's job. Uh, and one uh, bomb explosion, it blew the hat, the tin hat, off the man and uh, the pit, the gun pit, nearest the works, and we lost the gun. The gun was blown away, we don't know where. Uh, the boss happened to be at the front of the works at the time and lost his hat. <laughs> it was blown away as well. Uh, we had no real casualties. Uh, everybody, with the one exception of the regular who cleaned the guns and was uh, fatally killed through not having his safety catch when he started to clean the gun. These guns were uh, in banks of four. There were four guns fired by one trigger. And he unfortunately happened to be standing in front of one of the barrels. Shot through the heart. Uh, the home guard uh, attended his funeral and he was buried in Captain at the request of his uh, wife in London. On one uh, very fine summer day, uh, this was towards the end of the war, uh, I took my wife into the country to show her where our camp was usually held. Uh, this was in the Brickley Estate, quite close to Brickley Castle. It was a lovely day, as I said, warm, was by the lakeside, and suddenly we heard a beautiful tenor voice started to sing Marley, Marlene. Uh, I wondered where on earth, where on earth this voice was coming from. Obviously, it was in a strange language. So we gradually traced our way to the garden where we saw an Italian prisoner uh, graveling the paths in the garden. Uh, and as you walked his wreck, he was singing Lily Marlene, uh, the famous uh, German song that uh, the girl, uh, the Swedish girl, Andersen, used to sing to the troops, both German and English. Uh, it really was a magnificent effort, and uh, he couldn't speak any English, although we thanked him for uh, a beautiful uh, song, and uh, uh, he just couldn't uh, reply at all, naturally, and I couldn't speak at all yet to uh, thank him properly. So that finished uh, the Brackley uh, episode.